And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday night wine stream and another exciting edition of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight we are going to do what we've been talking about doing for quite a while, and that is open up the Escorlata. This is, uh, I've been very excited about opening up this wine. I actually purchased it uh, months ago from wine store in Blakeney, North Carolina, where I shop for a lot of my wines. But tonight we're going we're going to go ahead and open it up. Now uh, you notice the mic in front of me. I'm also recording uh, live to uh, the podcast at the same time, trying to do it all at once. <clears throat> so we'll see how this works out. And of course, uh, I've got a few specials tonight. I mean, this is the weekend before the holidays, of course. And as I've been promoting all along. Um, I'm planning to do some giveaways. We want to do some giveaways. Uh, participate in the chat, please, because that's how you get free stuff, is by participating in the chat. And uh, I hope everyone will join me for that. Uh, tonight, I have the Escorlata. I'm also going to try an eggnog. It's called a Holly Hill eggnog. And this is a, an eggnog wine, a wine-based eggnog, I guess. And we're going to test that out as well. This is one that my, my wife, Chi, purchased. And we're going to try pairing it with some foods and a couple of desserts. So we should see how, we'll see how that works out. Uh, first of all, before we start, I want to welcome everyone in the chat. My lovely wife, Chi, of course, is in the chat. Frosty, my old friend Frosty Devers in the chat. How are you doing, Frosty? I hope you're doing well. And stick around and drink along with us. And uh, uh, tell me what you're drinking or what you're not drinking or what you'd like to be drinking. Tim is in the chat. It's great to see you too, Tim. Thanks for joining me in the chat. And stick around because we're going to have some giveaways. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to uh, do some toasting and, and just have a great time. Of course, uh, you can watch uh, this stream live tonight. Uh, on Saturday night, you can watch it on Facebook. You can watch it on our Facebook page at Drink with Rick. You can also watch it on YouTube uh, at Drink with Rick. And you can catch it on Twitch, twitch.tv. And that is Savoya Media. That's the, the page you want to get, a Savoya Media, all one word, S-A-V-O-I-A-M-E-D-I-A. -E -E uh, you can also watch it on Periscope and through Twitter. Uh, if you go to Twitter, you can comment on Twitter and watch the stream live at Drink with Rick, our Twitter handle is at Drink with Rick. So, uh, and also on the website, I don't want to forget the website, drinkwithrick.com. You can go to www.drinkwithrick.com and watch live also. And you can watch it later and catch the podcast as well. Now, uh, you won't be able to participate live in the chat on uh, Facebook, uh, excuse me, on the website on drinkwithrick.com, uh, but you can comment in the comment section below where, uh, where this is appearing. And, uh, and I'll catch you later on that. But uh, everywhere else, uh, Twitch and uh, Twitter and uh, let's see, where else are we? Uh, YouTube and Facebook, you can uh, join in the chat and I'll be watching all those. In fact, let's check, uh, let's check and see what's going on on YouTube. Nothing, nothing much yet on YouTube. I think we have one or two people watching there, uh, but no action per se. We've got uh, Twitch is open. I'm watching this chat as well in case you're uh, up on Twitch. And I am checking um, uh, Twitter from time, from time to time. I think I actually my Twitter page went down, so <laughs> I can't see it at the moment. But uh, we are streaming there. Um, let's go ahead and get started with, with looking at the wine. I want to go ahead and introduce the wine. And uh, this is an Escorlata. Let me pull this up for just a moment. This, this is a very interesting wine, and there's a little background on this uh, that I'm going to explain in just a moment. This wine, this is a 2018. It's a Spanish wine. And uh, I've got it next to me right here. This, uh, you notice, in case you haven't noticed, <laughs> it's hard not to notice, but there is quite a label on this wine. The label itself is fascinating. It is a painting. It's uh, apparently a, a, a nice, famous painting. And to be honest, I can't remember exactly where it was from. I think it was from the War of 1812 or, or something. Or maybe it was the uh, uh, Spanish-American uh, War or something. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's what it was. Uh, actually, uh, I'm not really 100% sure now at this point. It's been a while. But if uh, the folks from the wine store show up in the chat later, like uh, Matt, 
uh, or Jonathan, uh, they might be able to fill me in a little bit or, or refresh my memory. If Trish uh, is here later, I think Trish is going to be at a party tonight, so I don't know if she's going to be here or not. But uh, uh, if she stops by later, she might be able to help me out with that. Uh, let's look at the back of this wine, because this is a, a very, very interesting label. The uh, Let me try... Let me get the front, the back here. This is the back of the wine, and I'll read it for you. It's hard to, to say. It, it is a Spanish wine, Vino D.O.P. Dop Almanza, I guess that's what it says. And this is, uh, there's 14.5% alcohol by volume in the 750 milliliter bottle. And uh, really, to be honest, <laughs> I'm... Uh, uh, yeah, that's a that's quite a bit of alcohol. It's a pretty high uh, alcohol content, uh, and, and we've talked about this before. Uh, you get up to fourteen point five percent or fifteen percent, fifteen and a half percent. It's it's uh, it's kind of a, a high alcohol content for wine, but that seems to be almost the normal these days. I'm not going to get into that right now. This is a imported bar. Uh, this is imported by Artesian Enterprise in Greensboro, North Carolina, and uh, it is a product of Spain. So uh, this Spanish wine, uh, this, this should be a very, very interesting wine to try out. Looking forward to it. I did have a tasting. It was a while back. And when I tasted it, it, was in, it intrigued me. But uh, I thought it was a little young. I thought it was just a little bit young. So that's why I kept the bottle. And I saved it to open up now because I figured give it a few months on the shelf and it'll probably be fine to drink by now, and I, th I think it, it probably will be today, uh, or tonight. Uh, let's see, Jonathan's joined us in the chat. Jonathan, I'm, I'm happy to see you here and stick around. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight, and Phil is in the uh, chat. Phil, it's always great to see you, and it's always an honor to have you here. Um, I, I hope uh, you can stick around and join in as well. Uh, Jonathan says, hey, Rick. Right back at you, Jonathan. And uh, Jonathan, maybe you can fill me in a little bit on the Escort Lotta um, I, I know there's some history about this. I, as I recall, this is, um, uh, I think a wine store has this wine, and I think this label is um, a, a painting. I don't remember what the painting's actually from. Maybe you can fill me in if you know. If not, maybe we can check with, with Matt, and he probably knows. Uh, but I do recall uh, that it is on loan. It's on a 10-year loan to, to have the the label on the bottle that's that's an exclusive 10-year license to have it on the bottle so um, that that I thought that was pretty interesting but it, it's really an intriguing label I, it's worth it keep the bottle just for the 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 label itself the painting itself I like this so we got the wine and uh, we have uh, tonight to pair it with I have uh, some pizza the my lovely wife she made some pizza and it looks like some penny pasta. I think this penny pasta came from Trader Joe's. Uh, some a burger, some burger, uh, some crackers. Uh, I think we have the smooth uh, the uh, creamy gouda. Jonathan, the creamy gouda is back. We picked some up, so we've got some. And I think we have some parmesan in here. It's, I, I think it's either no, it's a soft mozzarella. That's a very soft mozzarella. So, and we have a couple cookies. And my wife, she just finished baking uh, another one of her. Uh, her apple pie, so I'm looking forward to trying this out with a little apple pie. Actually, we're going to try, we might try that with the dessert wine that I have up here, and that's going to be a lot of fun as well. Once again, I said before, we're going to have a few giveaways, so um, participate in the chat, because that's that's how we give stuff away. It's like the more you participate in the chat and uh, talk talk to me and talk to, uh, you know, talk about what's going on, I'm going to randomly, you know, this is a stream of consciousness kind of show, so I'm going to randomly choose uh, uh, who I'm going to give things away to and what I'm going to give away. You never know what you might win. So, uh, and uh, Jonathan, I know you've won something before, so, you know, a couple of you have won uh, something before, so, so you know I'm talking, you know, what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see. Uh, before we open this bottle of wine... Uh, there is one more thing that I wanted to mention that 
as a special item that we're giving away tonight, or two special items, we're going to be giving away an ER210 emergency compact uh, crank radio, weather radio, from buy2wayradios.com. And uh, also, we're going to be give away, giving away, uh, where is it? A copy of Start Ugly. Now, that's providing we have enough people in the chat to get all the way too. Uh, but uh, everybody should probably win something tonight, right? Because I have a few things to give away, quite a few things. Anyway, so without further ado, let me go ahead and open this bottle of Escorlata. And to do that, we're going to need, I have to reach for it's way in the back here, my. This is my trusty uh, V corker, <laughs> cork opener, corkscrew. And this was purchased from an all. I, this came from Aldi originally, I think, in the UK. But my wife, she purchased it for five dollars from an estate sale here in the U.S. So we're going to open this up. And this is an awkward position because usually I'm supposed to be a little bit higher up, but it's it's easy to come up. And I've given up on trying to take the corks out of here during the show. Uh, I usually get hurt or something doing that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to save that for another time. But we've got the wine open, and of course. We're going to aerate it, and my trusty Veneto uh, aerator from the Veneto Wine Lover set, which actually you can purchase the entire set for $19.99 on uh, Amazon.com. You can actually purchase this for, I think it's going for about $12, $13, just for the aerator. Uh, but well worth it. It's, it's a nice piece. And tonight, because it's a special occasion, I'm going to, uh, normally I pour it in my Cooper's Hawk glass, but I'm saving that for the dessert wine. I'm going to be pouring this wine in this, uh, this is a Galway uh, Genuine Crystal Glass. And this was a gift from uh, my bosses, my employers, Danny and Charity. Uh, and they gave it to me last year, and I've been saving it. We've been keeping a special place uh, up uh, in our in our uh, uh, china cabinet, uh, and we were saving it for special occasions, and I consider this a special occasion. So we're going to try this out in this glass. This is Irish Crystal, Galway Irish Crystal, and a really nice set they gave me. They also gave me a really nice Irish Crystal carafe, and um, I was going to use that tonight as well, but I didn't have enough room on the, <laughs> the desk for it, and it required a little more preparation than I uh, than I uh, had time for, so we'll try that another time. Let's go ahead and uh, pour this wine just a little bit. Get a little bit of the wine in there, not too much. We don't need much for a tasting. We'll set that aside and let it breathe a little bit. And while it's breathing, let's find out a little bit more about this wine. Now. I searched around for information on this wine, and uh, you know there have been a couple of wines that we tried before that just there there was not a lot of information on. It was rather sparse. Uh, I did find it in the wine store's website, winestore.com, uh, and it is a Spanish wine, and it's supposed to go good with uh, some uh, grilled meats, which is why I have a hamburger out here. We're going to try that out, but it should go uh, well with some other. Uh, foods as well, because what I did find out uh, from other places, I, I went around Cellar Tracker, uh, seemed to say that it was a Garnacha that, that might have a Garnacha in it. It is a blend. It, it's a blend. It's not a 100% uh, any particular wine from what I understand. It appears to be a red blend. So uh, what the blend is exactly, I'm not sure because it does not say so. That's one thing. It does not say what the blend is on the bottle. I don't know. So uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming that there's some Grenache in it, uh, or Grenache in it, and I, I'm, I'm not absolutely 100% sure of any of this. Maybe Jonathan can fill me in if he, he knows a little bit more about this wine uh, than I do. Let's just go back and say, Jonathan says, ah, he does have some information on the painting. Jonathan says the painting is from the British National uh, Maritime Museum and depicts the British Navy defeating the Spanish fleet. Well, see, there you go. I was completely wrong. Not more of 1812. Uh, it did look like British, uh, British, uh, uh, you know, like a, uh, some kind of an armada going on there, but uh, I wasn't 100% sure what it was. Um, 
The, he says, uh, Jonathan says, wine is awesome. I've personally been involved in the demolition of a case since its release. So you have had a whole case of this wine on, on, your, on your own, Jonathan? Have you done it on your own? Um, and Matt's joined us. I'm glad Matt's here. Matt, it's great to see you. We've missed you the last few streams. I'm glad you're here tonight. Uh, Matt says, hello, neighbors, and right back at you. And Courtney's here. Courtney's good to see you, too. It's great to see you. And uh, you're just in time for the first tasting of the escrow. And okay, not the first tasting. It's my first tasting here on the wine stream. <clears throat> apparently, uh, you all, and, and Jonathan apparently has been tasting quite a bit of it. <laughs> I'd say a case is a fair amount, wouldn't you? Uh, well, let's go ahead and try. Let's see if I can make some room here on this table. It's a little bit crowded, and I've got a lot going on. Uh, got a recorder and all kinds of stuff here. But let's see what we have. Anyone in, uh, let's see, nobody on YouTube at the moment. And uh, not much going on at Twitch, Periscope. Um, I think most of the action, as usual, is happening on, uh, right here on Facebook, at Drink with Rick. Let's see. Um, I'm going to give this a sniff, and we'll see what what we've got here. Okay, uh, right away, <clears throat> right away, I can smell the black cherry on the nose, and a couple of black fruits, some blackberry. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, I, you know, I, I wouldn't say it, it's not. <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, I would say it, it's not complex at all. It's yeah, there. There are a couple of flavors, but it's mostly mostly fruit mostly mostly fruit maybe a little smells a smells just a little bit earthly or earthy let me see it tastes earthy tannic um rather tannic you know tannins let's say it's a little oaky oaky some plum that might also be a bit jammy. Mm. Mm. A little leather. Um, let me see a little leather, but kind of a smoky kind of finish. But it it has a fairly smooth finish to it. It's not. Um, I think I was wise to let it sit for uh, a couple months, a few months before I opened the bottle. Because I think the first time I did a slight taste, it did seem a little young. This seems a little. This seems more balanced <clears throat> than it was uh, than it than uh, my first impression of it uh, a few months ago. Yeah. Now it has the the um, <clears throat> the um, it goes. It actually goes down pretty pretty well. It does have a lingering finish, which is good. That's not a bad thing. You, you want an, a nice lingering finish. Um, some wines, they don't really, there's not much of a finish on some wines that I, that I have. And uh, it's, it's a little disappointing sometimes because you kind of want to have that feel in your mouth after the wine's gone down. But it's, uh, it's there. It's there. Let me pour a little bit more. I'm doing this with my left hand, so it's a little bit awkward and the reason once again is because I'm I got a crowded table here Get a little bit more something else in there what is that what is that hmm uh, I, I, I think it must be the fruits just all coming together <clears throat> Does seem a little bit uh, like some jam. Mm -hmm. no, and then I like it. It's 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 good. I like it, and I'm going to have a little bit more of this. But I tell you what, look, we're going to need to pair it with some food and see how it works with the food. Before I do that, let me see what uh, what else we have here. Uh, who we have in the chat? Um, <clears throat> 
Courtney says, hey, uh, Rick, glad to see you. Well, it's great to see you too, Courtney. I'm really happy we've missed you the last couple of wine streams, and I'm glad you're here now. And uh, Matt, it's been a little while, but I'm glad to see you here as well. Uh, Jonathan says, uh, oh, he's responding to uh, the what I was asking him if he drank the whole case of wine by himself. He said, uh, Jonathan says, not on my own, several rounds at our duck club and with friends. And... Uh, <laughs> He says, happy birthday, hangover, Courtney. <laughs> and Courtney says, well, man, I've been drinking NyQuil, so I'm not going to make it long. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Courtney. You're a little under the weather. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. NyQuil, you know, this is, I, I'd say just about any wine is better than NyQuil. Okay, well, I take that back. There are a couple of wines that I wouldn't touch. Uh, <laughs> but uh, for the most part, I would choose almost any almost any wine over NyQuil, that's for sure. I'm not a big fan of NyQuil. Um, Matt says, Cooper Hawk, Cooper Hawk glass brings out the aromas. Well, this is actually a, um, the, Cooper, the Cooper's Hawk glass is right here. We're saving that for dessert, for the dessert wine. But uh, this is actually Galway. <clears throat> Galway, Galway. It's, uh, it's Irish crystal. And it's really nice. It is. It is, and this is a nice glass. Once again, it was a gift from um, my employers, uh, and uh, uh, it was um, from Danny and Charity, <clears throat> and they gave it to me last year at Christmas time as as a gift. And I I've been sort of saving it for a very special occasion, and I think this is it. I think it's one of them anyway. And uh, let's go ahead and try it with. Let's try this wine with a little bit of uh, food. Let's try it with the. Well, we'll try it with a penny pasta. I'm not sure if it'll go great with with the pasta per se. Matt, do you know what is specifically what the wine blend is in this wine? Mm. Have a little bit more of this. Pasta is a little bit on the cold side, but it was hot about 20 minutes ago. Okay, this is a Trader Joe's penny pasta. Let's try it with a burger because uh, according to Wine Store on their website, it's supposed to go great with grilled meats. So we'll try it with this, this hamburger. Let's see how it's going to work. Definitely grilled. Mm. Okay, it's okay. It works well with the hamburger, with the burger. Matt says 100% Grenache. Really, 100%? Because I think the few places that I've seen it uh, listed is that it's a, it's, is that it's a red blend. But um, So you're saying this is 100% Grenache. We'll have to have you on the show sometime, Matt. We'll have to talk about uh, wines and, and probably this one a little bit more. But uh, I, I, it does taste like a Grenache. It does. If that's the case, and this should go good with a couple of things here. Uh, let's try it with. Let's you know what I tell you what. Let's try it with, Jonathan. I've got some more of this this creamy Gouda. Let's try it with that. <clears throat> I love the creamy Gouda, by the way. I like that. Of course, I think a lot of that's the Gouda because it is creamy. But it goes down, <clears throat> it goes down even creamier with the wine. And with this Grenache, with this Escorlano, it goes down nicely. Mm. Have to try that again. Mm, I like that. Oh, I like that. Uh, Matt says would love to come on the show and would be honored. Well, Matt, I'd be honored to have you. <clears throat> so we'll talk about that. We'll get that worked out. I'm going to try with a little mozzarella, although I think this will probably go better with the Gouda. It's a very soft mozzarella cheese. I need a little more wine for that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I like it better with the Gouda. It's good. It's good with the Gouda. 
It's Gouda with the Gouda, right? <clears throat> I, I've overdone that one too many times, right, Jonathan? <laughs> I think we both have in the past. All right, well, I tell you what, let's uh, let me check the, uh, okay, nothing going on on, on uh, YouTube. <coughs> Chris has joined us in the uh, in the chat, and Chris, I'm glad to see you here. It's great to see you. Stick around. How are you doing? By the way, it's been a, a, a quite a while, but I'm glad you're here now. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to toast some bir birthdays, and I'm going to give away a couple of things randomly in the chat. Um, Chris says Gouda is always better. Yes, it is. It's it's very very good. Um, this Gouda is, this Trader Joe's Gouda, I, I really, really like that. It's become one of my favorite cheeses now. We're uh, going to, when, when I say, oh yes, birthdays. I First of all, I would like to toast, and uh, she's not in, in, in the chat, but uh, I would like to toast, uh, uh, let me get this for just a moment here. Mm. There we go. <laughs> I'd like to toast uh, Katie. Um, my friend Chris uh, Kremitzos, his wife Katie Kremitzos, her birthday was yesterday, and I want to say uh, happy birthday to Katie. Happy birthday, Katie. Chris Kremitzos, as I mentioned a number of times before, is the uh, uh, he's the co-founder of uh, Podfest Multimedia Expo. And um, I've uh, I've met his wife Katie, and um, we've uh, we've we've all spent some time at Podfest, getting to all know each other a little bit better, uh, and and getting to hone our craft of podcasting. And Chris is also the author of uh, the book behind me that we're going to give away, uh, Start Ugly. But his wife Katie is. Uh, I'm not going to give away her age, but uh, here's to you, Katie. Happy birthday. Another birthday I would like to toast. Another birthday I'd like to toast is for my nephew, my grandnephew, I should say. My grandnephew, Alex. Alexander J. He's turning seven, seven years old. He Well, he turned seven. Is it? Yeah, the 20th? What's today? 21st. It was yesterday. He turned seven years old yesterday. Happy birthday to little Alex. Happy, happy birthday. He's, um, Alex is the son of my, uh, my niece, uh, Jenny, and uh, my nephew. Uh, you know, I, I, I talked about my, my nephew uh, before in the past, he he was uh, uh, killed in a car crash uh, a few years ago uh, by a drunk driver, and uh, we uh, it, it, his name was Lester, and uh, he was killed uh, on his way home from work, and uh, we lost him way way too young. It was a big it was a huge huge blow to all of us, and uh, he left behind uh, his son Alex. And uh, and, a, and a little daughter and and uh, and his wife, and uh, I tell you it was it was pretty rough. It was pretty rough. I miss Lester. Also, here's to Lester, by the way. But uh, his son Alex has turned seven uh, yesterday. Grown up so fast because uh, I remember when he was born, and it was just it just seemed like it wasn't that long ago. Uh, really, it's just the time really really flies. Um, you know, also I want to um, go into the the national days, and as we always do, and uh, as we're to make a segue from there, isn't it? the national days, uh, December twenty first. That's today. To, uh, December twenty first is National French Fried Shrimp Day. I have never had French fried sh tr uh, shrimp. I'm not haven't had enough of this yet. Uh, I have never had French fried shrimp, uh, but if you have had it, you'll have to tell me how it is. I, I don't know, but here's to National French Fried Shrimp Day. And it's Crossword Puzzle Day. Today's Crossword Puzzle Day. I love to do crossword puzzles. I haven't done one in a while, but I enjoy doing crossword puzzles. They're, they're, uh, <clears throat> they're really, really stimulating for the mind. So here's the National Crossword Puzzle Day. 
And today is Humbug Day. Humbug Day. You can drink to that. Uh, let me see what else we have here for Humbug uh, for National Days. Uh, Humbug Day, this National Maine Day. So the state of Maine gets its own day, National Maine Day. Phileas Fogg win a wager day. How about that? Who knew? Uh, Phileas Fogg win a wager day. Uh, today is also winter solstice. You know, the day between December 20th and December 23rd. And uh, National Flashlight Day. I had no idea that flashlights had their own national day. Who knew? Uh, but uh, thanks to the, the uh, national day uh, calendar, uh, now I know. And uh, na- there's also National Homeless Persons Remembrance Day. That's the first day of winter, and I can understand why. And in the cold... We should remember the homeless. You know, that's um, there are uh, a number of ways that we can help uh, the homeless, and, and and one of course is to to help out a lot of the shelters that are in need of of things, not just money. I mean, they all need money, but but uh, but also other things. You know, like beds, blankets, coats, things like that. National homeless. Uh, person's Remembrance Day. If you've got coats hanging around, you're not using, doing anything with. You've got blankets, you whatever. Take them to your to your local uh, homeless shelter. Donate them. That they they can really use that sort of thing. Uh, because you know what? It's it's getting cold. It's going to be cold this winter, and there are so many people that are homeless now. They don't have a place to live, and uh, they're out on the street now. There are homeless shelters available. Some of them choose not to go to the homeless shelter, but but a lot of them, uh, for some uh, some places, the homeless shelters are, you know, full and bulging because it's just not necessarily enough beds to to keep everyone on, on a cold night. So, any way that we can help our local homeless shelter to to uh, to help the homeless, I think is is a good thing, especially on cold nights like this. Uh, we're having kind of a cold night, uh, a little cold snap here our, ourselves tonight. So um, anyway, here's to all of those days. I want to take a toast to all those days. And there's one more day. There's um, for today, Ann and Samantha Day, uh, also June 20th, 2020. Uh, Ann and Samantha Day. Now, um, what they're referring to is... Um, in Anne, they're referring to the Anne is Anne Frank, um, who was the young uh, Jewish girl uh, who, you know, wrote that famous diary, and for the diary of Anne Frank, uh, who she and her family were were uh, in a uh, concentration jam, uh, camp. They had to, to fl- you know, they had to flee Nazi Germany, and um, and uh, she, you know, they were hiding out for quite a while, and. Uh, the, the, well, uh, the, they, she was in the concentration camp. She was forced into hiding. She was trying to hide from the Germans, and uh, uh, and they were were found, I believe, at some point. And um, you know that uh, the I, I think uh, uh, well, they they actually were were uh, forced into hard labor in the concentration camp. I think once they were once they were found, and and uh, it, it the thing is that it was. Um, if you've never read the the book, The Diary of Anne Frank, you've never seen the movie. Um, it's it's kind of I think it's kind of tough to get through, and um, I think everyone should read it. I, I think they should read the book and and see the movie. Uh, I, I think the book that I don't think the movie really does the book justice. Uh, Samantha Smith, the uh, Samantha and Samantha uh, is um, Samantha Smith is daughter of a. Uh, of an instructor of college literature, and uh, she was uh, when she was ten years old. She was uh, trying to understand the Cold War between the U.S. and Russia, and she wrote a letter to uh, to Yuri Andropov, the uh, to the Soviet leader, and um, and she re- received a reply from him, and. Um, she became known as America's youngest ambassador. She later on went to the Soviet Union and wrote a book about her visit. But she was uh, she passed away at age 13 when the 
plane she was in crashed in 1985. So, uh, so here's to uh, Anne and Samantha, Anne Frank and Samantha Smith, who both have a day today. Now, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, oh, yes, National Days. Let's go back to, to the rest of National Days. There is, uh, on tomorrow, is National Date Nut Bread Day. I'm not a big fan of date, date nuts. Are you? Are you a big fan of date nuts? I don't know. <laughs> uh, let me go back to the chat first and see, uh, catch up on the chat. And uh, Joyce has joined us in the chat. Joyce, it's great to see you. I'm glad to see you. Joyce is another one of my nieces. She is, uh, she is one of my nieces, an awesome, awesome person. Uh, and Joyce, I'm glad you're here. Stick around and tell me how you're doing. Lon is in the chat. Lon, it's always good to see you too. I'm glad you're here and, uh, and stick around. We're going to do some giveaways in just a minute or two. I'm going to get uh, through a couple of other things in the National Days because I think there's a National Day here that uh, I'm looking forward to. December 23rd, which is uh, Monday is National Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer News Day. I don't know how you pronounce that. Pfeiffer News? Pfeiffer News? It's national. It's that day. <laughs> it's National Pfeiffer News Day. Pfeiffer News Day. And uh, it's, now, it's also National Roots Day. So I'll drink to those. It's also Forefathers Day, December 22nd, and, uh, unless on Sunday, then following Monday. And of course, Hanukkah begins. Uh, and that kind of changes every year, but Hanukkah begins uh, this year on the 22nd. So here's to all of those days. And you notice I'm not trying to drink to each one individually. There's a reason for that. It's because I'm trying to trying to keep it light tonight for uh, for for drinking. I mean, mainly because this thing says it's 14.5% alcohol by volume, and I really don't want to overdo that. Uh, pretty high alcohol content. There is one more day. There is one more day before we uh, before we end the national days, and that is Festivus. Uh, you know, this is, of course, the holidays, and there are a lot of holidays. There's, uh, you know, you got Christmas and and uh, Hanukkah and uh, a, a lot of other holidays that uh, that fall in here. You know, every, everyone kind of has celebrates their holiday this this time of year. Their big holiday, <clears throat> but um, I like to celebrate Festivus. You know, Festivus. Festivus is a festival for the rest of us. Of course, that was made famous. If you if you're a Seinfeld fan, that was made famous, and uh, actually, it was I think it was pretty much invented by the TV show Seinfeld. And uh, and I have a thing here, and this and this actually comes from the National Day Calendar, so I'm I'm quoting for some from some of this. But I've seen the episode. If you've never seen the episode, it's pretty funny. Uh, I've I've seen the episode a number of times. It's it's always a riot. But uh, Festivus. Uh, instead of a tree, you have uh, a Festivus pole. There's a Festivus pole. And you, you set up the pole and you display the pole in the house. And, and uh, <laughs> you, then you serve a traditional dinner. And then during the dinner, you have a, uh, a series of events. Uh, and and uh, one of those events is the airing of the grievances, where each per, uh, where each person takes a turn around the table, describing how others have disappointed him or her over the past year. Yeah. Uh, then after that, after dinner, you have the feats of strength, uh, where uh, you have wrestling the, the you, you have to wrestle the head of the household. And and uh, I think in this case it was uh, George's father that uh, that he had to wrestle George's father in the show. Uh, and then there's the festival, uh, the, there's uh, the Festivus Miracle. The Festivus Miracle is uh, a very unimpressive miracle, something that's not really a miracle, but they call it a miracle. You can count, uh, according to the website here, and I'm reading this uh, verbatim, you may count carrying all the groceries into the house for dinner without tripping or dropping one of the bags as a Festivus Miracle. Uh, but uh, and there's even a Festivus song. Uh, so uh, you basically uh, basically have a a, uh, a parody, I guess, of, of Christmas and Hanukkah and, and all those uh, festivals, uh, festivals ro rolled into one. So that's festivals, and that's that's just 
I like to celebrate Festivus. That's just, although I think I kind of skipped the airing of the grievances because I, I just don't like to complain about everybody. Although my wife might disagree. Here's the Festivus. Happy Festivus, everyone. Well, let's see. Um, I want to see who, who's in the chat here that I feel like giving something away. And let me show you something that I have to give away. Now, one of the things that uh, Tommy and I did a couple of weeks ago is we participated in um, the Second Harvest Food Bank uh, donation pickup at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And that was for their Festival of Lights event and we were uh, collecting um, goods, canned goods and dry goods uh, for the um, for the Second Harvest Food Bank of Charlotte. And in return, we got to give out some gifts. And a lot of this was sponsored by Food Lion. <clears throat> and at the end of the event, uh, Food Lion had some of these, uh, they had, they gave it these really nice ornaments. And Food Lion, uh, they uh, had some extra ones, and um, they said to me, you know, uh, you, you're giving some things away on your show, on your wine stream this December. Here's a few, here are a few ornaments you can give away as well, and I thought that would be great. So, you know, these are really, really nice ornaments. I got a picture of it here somewhere. Let me see. Where is it? Um, there we go. Let me get, this is a picture of the, uh, a picture of the ornament it's uh there's a front and back to it actually the back side's really nice uh the front side uh says make more merry from food lion <laughs> but i've got a picture of the back of it here but it's really nice i have about four of these to give away to anybody who wants one who wants to decorate the tree with them and of course if you you know if you don't like the uh promotional aspect of it where it says food and it's, it says food lion in very very small small type but hey it's a free ornament and while we were at this event giving away these ornaments, there were people uh, trying to get like two or three of these things. Uh, they really, really like these ornaments. So, um, they're, and they're, they're, yeah, they're attractive. So I, I've got four of them to give away. I'm going to give away an ornament uh, to the first person that, uh, that tells me they've got their tree set up. <laughs> Tell me you've got your tree set up. Now, now Chi, you can't participate in this. Chi and Tia put theirs up there yesterday. You, you can't, uh, you, no, I, I, they have one already, by the way. Um, but uh, the first person that tells me in the chat that they've got their tree set up and ready to go, um, they, they get an ornament. How about that? Uh, Courtney says, uh, for the rest of oh, she's talking about Festivus. Uh, she says, for the rest of us, I al have already aired my grievances. <laughs> I'm not going to ask what they were. Jonathan says a bottle of uh, Ed Corlata, oh, Escorlata may lead to feats of strength. You know, I forgot the feats of strength thing. That's right, the feats of strength. That uh, I think that was kind of uh, tied up with the with the wrestling match, right? Isn't that what that was? Um, I think that was part of the the uh, wrestling match. Courtney says, I have my tree and Festivus pole. Well, you have both. So, Courtney, you get an ornament. I'll send you an ornament. You're the first person to tell me that, so you get an ornament. I'll, uh, I'll send you an ornament. I've got one reserved uh, for you right here. And I have a few other ornaments to give away as well, as well as a few, uh, as well as a few other things. Let's see... Uh, so you have both a tree and a festivus pole. You just you're not taking any chances. You're going to just celebrate everything. <laughs> you got it all there. Well, uh, I guess this calls for a little more wine. Congratulations, Courtney, and I'll toast you for just for that. How about that? Here's to Courtney. Let's see who else uh, we have in YouTube. Anyone in YouTube? No. Folks on YouTube, you're missing out. I'm going to be giving a few things away here tonight. So we have uh, Phil and uh, let's see who else is here. Chris is, uh, he, oh, yeah, Chris says Gouda is always better. You know, Chris, I tell you what, that's a very astute observation. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to, give, I'm going to send you an ornament as well. How about that? Uh, let me know. Uh, Courtney and Chris, you can... Uh, uh, private message me uh, or email me at uh, here. Let me get the email up at rick at savoymedia.com, 
and I will send just send me an address, a shipping address I can send those to, and I will get those out to you as soon as possible. And uh, so Chris and Courtney both get, uh, you know, where's my pen? Here we go. Let me write this down. Chris and Courtney. And uh, make sure you have a couple ornaments. I do have a couple more done here, by the way. So we'll, we'll come up with something uh, very interesting to, to see who wins that one. <clears throat> oh, I missed this other uh, comment from Chris. It says, doing well, my friend. And uh, I'm glad you are. I'm glad you are. And uh, Joyce, how are things at, uh, at home, by the way? <clears throat> how are things going? I, I, I trust that... Uh, I trust that Alex had a great birthday, and I did toast him, by the way. I'll toast him again. Here's to my grandnephew, Alex. Alexander J. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I hope everything's doing well. I hope everybody's fine over there. And uh, let's see. We covered Festivus. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> it's not even a. It's not even eleven o'clock yet. I've gone through most of my, of my notes here, most of my show notes. So we went through most of that already. I think I was moving pretty quick. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we are going to give away uh, to someone. We're going to give away an emergency compact crank radio. I've got it right here, as a matter of fact. And then, and, and I want to give away a couple of T-shirts too. This is all courtesy. Uh, actually, I purchased this one, but uh, from Buy Two Way Radios. I, for full disclosure, I work for BuyTwoWayRadios.com, and but I, uh, I have a few T-shirts and things here, courtesy of Buy Two Way Radios, and also courtesy of Buy Two Way Radios. Uh, if you need a weather radio or any kind of radio, you can get an extra five percent off that radio or those radios, whatever you're purchasing, by purchasing by using. Let me try that again. You can <laughs> maybe I have had too much of this. That's fourteen point five percent alcohol by volume. Uh, you can uh, you can make that purchase uh, of of a radio or radios at buytowayradios.com. You can get five percent off your order when you use the promo code Wine Show. That's W I N E S H O W Wine Show. So you can uh, get a discount, five percent discount off of that. But uh, I want to give this away, so so we'll do something really, really. Uh, we'll, we'll do something that'll make it fair. Try to make it fair for everybody here on the on the uh, on, on in the chat, so I can give it away. And because uh, I'd like to do that before the the uh, end of the stream tonight, because um, you know I, I want to give stuff away. I like to give stuff away. My boss is. <laughs> They know I like to give stuff away, and that's why Tommy and I went to the to the uh, uh, Second Harvest Food Bank event uh, a couple of weeks ago. Is because uh, you know th- th- I volunteered just because I really didn't have anything else to do at the moment, and uh, I, I was going to be there for four hours. Tommy was doing this event for uh, to earn some credit for uh, for his scholarship, his college scholarship that he's uh, that he has participated in. Uh, in, an, in an event once a quarter, in some uh, sort of, sort of um, uh, do some sort of community service or, or uh, a charity event, and he chose this. We went there, but it, it was a long drive. So we were in South Charlotte, and it's way up there in Concord, the um, uh, the speedway. But uh, when we got there, I was thinking, you know, I don't want to be sitting here for four hours doing nothing, watching Tommy do stuff. So I, I want to do something too. I want to have fun. And, and they uh, they asked me. Uh, they, they said, well, um, you know, the, the, uh, you really you sure you want to do this? You want to, it was cold. It was like in the low forties, upper thirties, low forties. It was pretty cold outside. They said, and I said, yeah, no problem. I love to give away stuff. You know, I'm, I'm collecting food. I'm doing something good for the community. But at the same time, they had me giving away these ornaments and, and coupons and things like that. And I love to give away things. I really do. And that's why I'm here doing this tonight. It's a, it's a fun thing to do. At work, where I, you know, at, on my job, I, I love to do giveaways and, and uh, freebies and things like that. Uh, so uh, it's just, uh, yeah, you know, especially... Especially if they aren't mine. <laughs> That's like somebody else paid for it. So, uh, yeah, sure, I'll give it away all day. Um, 
anyway, so uh, Jonathan says, send some Gouda with Courtney's ornament. Uh, you know, I'd like to do that, but uh, I don't think it would, would uh, I don't think it would uh, fare well shipping it out with, with uh, in, in the, in the mail. <laughs> You're joking, of course. Yeah, all right, Jonathan, maybe. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm almost through my show notes. I really didn't have much planned for the show except to just hang around and chat, drink wine, and give stuff away. There is one thing. There is one thing. I have a dessert uh, wine here that my wife purchased for me. I almost forgot about this, by the way. I have this dessert wine. And let me, let me pull this up for just a moment. This is, I don't know if you've seen this before. I don't know who, if, if any of you shop at um, Aldi at all? But uh, if, if you do, there's this. There's, uh, my wife, she picked up this bottle of, of Holly Hill Eggnog. It's a blend of white wine, egg yolk, and festive spices in the finest cream. Uh, traditional wine specialty. I'm, I'm reading everything on the front. And um, she picked this up. She says, you know, this would be a, a fun thing because she, she, you know, she knows I like eggnog. And I haven't really had any for a while. But but when I do have it, I, I, I can have a little bit. I, I don't like to, I can't go crazy on eggnog. I, I'll, I'll have a little bit and then after maybe... A small cup of it. Um, I'm sick of it, and I'm, I'm done for the for the holiday season. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'll, and I used to do this. I used to I used to go to the um, the store every year and buy a quart of eggnog, right? Just regular eggnog from the, you know, not nothing alcoholic, and uh, traditional because I, I I loved eggnog. But the thing is that. After I opened up that quart of eggnog, I'm going to pour in like maybe half a, a wine glass, not a half a wine glass, but just a little bit, you know, a quart of a wine glass, maybe a couple of shot glasses, uh, maybe a glass about, about, about this much in here. I would, I would sip a, I'd take a few sips, maybe pour a little bit more in there, take a few sips. And then after that, I was, uh, I was done with it. I was, uh, you know, I couldn't, couldn't have any more. And then the rest of the quart would sit in the fridge. Uh, I would I would probably drink about this much eggnog, and the rest of the court would sit in the fridge throughout the holidays. And then by the time uh, January 30th or February rolled around, when it was long past its prime, uh, then I would uh, decide to throw it out. <laughs> and that's my that's been my experience with eggnog. And every year, you know, she used to say, "Well, why why do you keep buying eggnog? Because you, you never drink it." And I was the only person in the house that drank it. Uh, nobody else would would really like it. Uh, nobody else liked it. So I have a little bit, and sit around, and it would it would go bad, and then I toss it. Um, so I hadn't bought any for quite a while. I'd, I'd gone a number of years without buying any eggnog because I thought, well, what's the point? Because I'm going to drink a little bit and be really sick of it, and then I can't drink anymore for a whole year. Um, so it was a surprise to me when when she uh, brought home this bottle of of. Holly Hill eggnog, and she said, "Well, um, you should try it because I know you like eggnog." The thing is about this this bottle of eggnog, and I'm going to show you the back end of this. It's uh, I'm going to read this. Holly Hill Farm eggnog wine specialty. Celebrate the holiday season with this traditional style eggnog. Select white wine was expertly blended with egg yolk, festive spices, and finest cream to create this indulgent wine specialty. We are sure you will just love the way the natural cinnamon, vanilla, nutmeg, and clove flavors blend in harmoniously with the cream giving this beloved holiday treat its great taste and warm and silky texture. Enjoy it at room temperature or heated. And uh, that's what it says. Now, of course, there's the government warning. If you notice the government warnings there, and there's a reason for that, because uh, let me read the ingredients. <clears throat> Grape wine with natural flavors, cream, eggs, and artificial color. And this is a product of Germany, by the way. It contains milk, egg, uh, and there is 
13.9% alcohol by volume in this 750 milliliter bottle. Now, uh, <clears throat> this is eggnog with wine, a white wine, I believe. This is a white wine. We're going to give it a try. We're going to give it a little bit of a try. And to go with that, we've got uh, some apple pie. I don't know if this will go well with apple pie or not, but I also have a couple of cookies here. I like these cookies, by the way. We're going to try this, and of course it's just a twist open cap, if I can get it open. We'll, we'll give it a... It, doesn't, it smells like eggnog. Let's try just a little bit of it. I don't have the aerator on this, okay? And of course I'm pouring it in my Cooper's Hawk Genuine Crystal Wine Glass from the Cooper's Hawk Winery and Restaurant in Orlando, Florida. Where uh, I'd already poured it in the glass when I did that. <clears throat> I had uh, planned to do the ding before I poured it in. I forgot. Yeah, first whiff, it smells like eggnog. And I can smell just a little bit of alcohol in there as well. It has a kind of a sweet sweet smell to it, which is, is not atypical of eggnog anyway, but it does have that added sweetness of what could be wine. Let's give it a taste. <coughs> there is definitely wine in this eggnog. This is this is not an eggnog to serve to the kids, okay, folks. <laughs> it's just, <clears throat> it's uh, there is definitely a wine in this eggnog. Now let me see. I think I pulled up something. Oh yes, I do have something on on this eggnog right here. It's uh, I have a I have a one sheet on this. It says um. It's Holly Hill Farm Eggnog, and it is from Germany. This is imported from Germany. According to the sheet that I have here, it is, uh, I don't, they don't say what kind of white wine it is. It, they just say it's white wine, egg yolk, fe uh, festive spices, festive spices, and cream. I don't know, festive spices and cream. Opaque, creamy, golden yellow color, and it says it's very sweet. Well, I tell you what, it is definitely sweet. It's um, it, it it very has a very vanilla taste to it. Like when I say vanilla, I mean it's it tastes like there's a lot of vanilla in it. I can taste some nutmeg in this wine, I mean, or this in this eggnog wine, eggnog whatever it is. And I used to traditionally sprinkle a lot of nutmeg. I would sprinkle extra nutmeg on my eggnog because I really like the taste of nutmeg on eggnog. So I wouldn't just sprinkle a little nutmeg on it just to make it look good, make it look festive. I used to really put a lot of nutmeg on it. So I, I know what a nutmeg tastes like. Um, and I can taste the nutmeg in here. So I don't need to put any nutmeg on this. It's, um, it's creamy, very, very creamy. It's not as creamy as your, t now, the thing about uh, eggnogs is that they're different kinds of eggnogs. I have had, I used to drink, what was it, uh, there was a particular brand of uh, 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 milk that they used to make an eggnog every year, and I can't remember what it was. I want to say it was T.G. Lee Dairy or something. That was back in Florida. And they would make their eggnog really thick. I think it was T.G. Lee. I'm trying to think. Either Borden or T.G. Lee. They would make their eggnog rather thick, and I liked it thick. It was, it, you know, it would pour out thick. But then uh, I would get some uh, other eggnogs where they were really, really thin, and I really didn't care for those kind of eggnogs much because I was used to the thicker eggnog. Now this looks almost, almost like that has the consistency of water. It looks like there's a little, it's a little watery, but I don't think that's water that I'm looking at. I think it's the wine content, and it does seem to have a little bit of. Um, it does look like it has some 
a trace of wine floating on the top. Let me pull this back up. There we go. Um, it looks like on the surface, it, there looks like a little bit of coat, coating of, of a wine there. This is kind of rich. <clears throat> I can see myself drinking more of this than I would regular eggnog. And not just because of the wine content, but I think that definitely helps. It's uh, You notice I've just switched from this, the Escorlata to this. We're going to try it with a dessert now because um, eggnogs go with a really good dessert. We're going to try it with my wife's uh, apple pie. This is her homemade apple pie. I don't know if this is going to mix well with apple, uh, to be honest. I mean, it'll, I think this would go better with a pumpkin pie. But we're going to try it with the apple. Mm. This is, wow. Gee, you did an excellent job on this pie as usual. Mm, it's awesome. The pie is awesome. Mm. Okay, that's, um, I have to try that again. I have to try that again. Let's see, um, uh, let me catch up in the chat here for just a second. Uh, let's see, where are you? Um, Nat says, my grandpappy used to make some nog. You'd have a glass and wake up three days later. I'll bet. <laughs> Look, what was in that nog? Uh, he used to make some nog. Uh, wasn't moonshine, was it? <laughs> some shine in there. Uh Three days later, Jonathan says, Borden eggnog is a classic around these parts. You know, I have not seen, is, is Borden still around? I have not seen Borden milk or eggnog around lately. I don't know where what happened to it. I used to see it all the time when I was a kid. We used to have in, in Salisbury, when I lived in Salisbury, North Carolina, when I was a kid, we had uh, a Borden ice cream uh I think we had a, a board and ice cream play, uh, place there uh, uh, where they made the ice cream uh, down the street from my house. It was on, uh, it was near Ennis Street and not too far from, <clears throat> not too far from where my dad had his, um, his drugstore and uh, he was a pharmacist, that, those kind of drugs. <laughs> um, the old classic drugstore from the 50s and the 60s with the, you know, the soda fountain and all that kind of thing. Uh, but they used to have a, a board and ice cream a place where they made the ice cream. They had, I think they were uh, uh, doing the milk there as well. And I remember going to a birthday party there once or twice where they uh, served up ice cream to all the kids. It was one of those kids' birthday party things. And I, I, I remember that's one of the vivid memories I have about early memories about Borden products. And I liked the ice cream and I liked the milk. Um, yeah, I used to like the board and eggnog too. It was good. So it's still around, Jonathan. I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen it for a long time. Um, Matt says true, true, on the board and eggnog, I believe. And uh, Matt says three quarters Borden and one quarter Jack Daniels. Okay, I could uh, I could get behind that. I could have a little bit of that. Jonathan says uh, forget the Gouda cheese send a pie. <laughs> I tell you, cheese pies are. And she spent many, many years perfecting her, her pie recipe. She spent many, many years doing this. Um, I think I've told this story before. Mm. Let me have some more of that pie. With the eggnog. Oh, that's rich. That is rich. There's one more thing I want to try it with. I have to try it with this. This is another holiday tradition, I think, in, for, for many people. Does anyone recognize this? I'll tell you what. I will give a, uh, let's see. What do we have to give away? Um, we've already given away a couple of ornaments. I've got a couple more to give away. Uh, let, you know what? I have a, I'll tell you what. i give one more ornament away. We have another ornament to give away. I'll give away an ornament to anyone who can, identify what this is. I'm going to go close up on it. Who can identify what this is? Another another tradition in uh, 
I think around the holidays, any holiday actually, but it's it's a, it's a cookie. I'll, I'll give you that. It's a hint. It's a cookie. But if you can identify what this is before I eat it, and let me tell you something, I love to eat these things. I go through quite a few of them um, uh, around this time of the year. <laughs> They're easy to eat. They're hard to put down. They're very very easy to eat. But uh, anybody know right offhand what this is? What this what this kind of cookie is? And uh, it, it'll it'll get you an ornament. Um, yeah, we're we're doing uh, we're 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 doing quiz show stuff here to <laughs> win win prizes. Um, let's see. Let me check. Just to be fair, let me check YouTube. Nothing going on YouTube. Twitch. Nobody going on Twitch. Anybody on Twitch? You just speak up because I'm I'm watching the chat here too. Let me know. And uh, Jonathan says, kind of looks like an R2D2 cookie. You are right, Jonathan. You are right. I tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that ornament, Jonathan. You win an ornament. I'll tell you exactly what this is. It is an R2D2 cookie. You're right. But uh, what I was looking for, actually, and that's close enough. You're gonna win the ornament. This is, you know, this Pillsbury cookies, the the ones that in the in the uh, refrigerator case. They come in a 24 pack, and it's just their Pillsbury packs of little Pillsbury cookies. And, uh, you know, you throw them in the oven on a tray in the oven. Ten minutes later, they're done. That's what this is. And yes, this is supposed to be R2D2. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's, it's, it does look like R2D2. Now, I'll tell you what could happen. I'm, I am taking a huge risk. Courtney says R2D2 cookies. Yes. In honor of Star Wars. Um, the last Skywalker, no, the rise of Skywalker, excuse me. I don't know why I messed that up. Too much wine. Not enough wine. Uh, Star Wars Rise of Sky Skywalker, and uh, which, of course, has opened up this past weekend. And we're planning to go see it. Now, we've already got our tickets for it. Um, but, the, yes, it is an R2-D2 cookie. But the Pillsbury cookies are what I'm talking about. You know, they make them all different types of things. Usually during the holidays, they'll have like little Christmas trees on them and and uh, all kinds of other stuff. They do them for all the holidays, uh, Thanksgiving, Halloween, July 4th, whatever. And uh, and you, uh, these things are so easy to eat. I can eat through a lot of these. Mm. I'm going to see how this pairs with this eggnog. Oh, okay, i got to put that down. That's sweet. I am going, if I don't have a headache because of the wine cunt in, to, in this Escorlata tomorrow, I'm definitely going to have a headache from all this sugar. That's that's way too much. It's good. Mm. Way too much sugar, though. i got to put that down. No more of this. I think I'm switching back. Whoa. It was good, though. It was good, but I can't do too many of those. That's just, whew, very sweet. Too sweet. Let me cap this before I, uh, that's dangerous. This eggnog is good. Uh, so what we were drinking here was a Holly Hill eggnog. This came from Aldi, I believe. Chi, I think you bought this at Aldi, right? And and I checked online, and they were selling, it was selling for like six ninety nine a bottle online at Aldi, but, uh, I asked Chi how much she paid for it. She couldn't remember exactly how much, but she said it was something along the lines of about five forty-nine to six six dollars. So maybe she got a bargain out of that. But uh, whoa, that's rich. Courtney says that was a joke, but wow, yeah, no, no joke. This is R two D two cookies. It, it kind of looks, you know, it, it's kind of hard to tell what it looks like when I'm looking at it up close here, but when you look at it on camera. You, you can kind of pick out the R2-D2 just a little bit more. Now, this is dangerous. I'll tell you why. Because we are on YouTube. And uh, YouTube has uh, a propensity for, for trolling all the videos to see who's, uh, who's a copyright violator or is it breaking, who's violating trademarks or whatever. So I've got to be careful about this because I might be throwing this up here. And then the next thing I know, I've got a, I've got a, uh, a strike because YouTube has decided 
that it's a violation of copyright to hold up a cookie with an image of what could be R2-D2 on the cookie. Uh, no, I'm serious. Disney has gotten that ridiculous these days. I mean, uh, there were a few years ago where Disney... Uh, don't get me started. This is my rant here. Uh, there was a few years ago, I think, uh, there was a uh, story about a daycare center that had put up cute pictures of all of the... The uh, of cartoon characters, including uh, I think the Warner Brothers characters, Bugs Bunny, and all that, and they put up a bunch of Disney characters, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck, and all that. And um, Disney uh, came down on them really hard because they said it was, and, and this is a little daycare center with the little kids and that, that kind of thing, You're just trying to liven things up and make the kids' day. Nope, Disney wouldn't have any of that. Um, they said that they had to take it down, they had to paint over it immediately. Now, this was kind of a, uh, if, I, if, I was running, if, if I was running Disney, I would have sent my artists over there and said, hey, you know what, um, you really shouldn't be doing this because the, you know, these are our trademark characters and we don't want people just arbitrarily throwing up our trademark characters on the walls of schools and stuff. But I tell you what I'll do. What I'll do is I'll send my artists over there, and we will offer to paint them bright, do it right, and paint them, and do it for the children, for the children. You know, do it, do it for a good cause and, and just be nice about it. They could have really, they could have really uh, uh, turned around what could have been a potentially – uh, disastrous uh, PR event, and they could have turned around and turned into something positive, something to say, hey, we're doing something for kids, we're protecting our trademarks, our copyrights, our characters, and that sort of thing, but at the same time, we're, we're doing something for the children. We're doing something good. They didn't do that. Instead, they went in, from what I understand, as I recall, maybe they came back and did it later, I don't know, but as I recall, the story went that they went back and they were pretty hard-nosed about it. And they said, no, you got to take them down. I think they, I don't know, they were threatening litigation or something to send their lawyers down there. And Disney has become so hard-nosed about this stuff. Um, it's just, uh, it, it, it borders on the absurd. But uh, for all I know, I could be throwing up this cookie. Well, no, I'll throw it up. I, <laughs> I could be putting up this cookie. I might throw up this cookie if I have enough of this. Uh the uh, I could be putting this cookie up here on screen, and the next thing I know, YouTube is coming after me with a strike uh, from Disney saying that, oh, you're violating our copyright because you're showing an image of R2-D2, or what could be R2-D2, uh, on your show without our permission. So, well, what can I say? You know what? If Gordon were here, uh, he might be later. I don't know. If Gordon were here, he could tell me what to do. Gordon Firemark. He's our uh, resident podcast and, and uh, YouTube expert, uh, our legal expert on that sort of thing. Maybe I'll ask him later. <laughs> anyway, so uh, that's enough of my ranting. I, I got nothing else. I got nothing else except giving stuff away. So... Uh, she says it's from Pillsbury Box. Yes, it is. It's from Pillsbury. Tommy's been buying a bunch of these cookies. and, and uh, Maybe we should have kept it safe, played it safe, and just thrown up the one with the Christmas trees on it. <laughs> I don't know. Back to this wine. What we're drinking, once again, is we're drinking the Escorlata. This is a 2018. And l let me give you my final review on this Escorlata here before we go any farther. This is... This is a Spanish wine. It's a wine from Spain. And according to Matt, this wine is 100% Grenache. I'm glad you told me, Matt. I, I'm glad you, you set me straight on that, Matt. Um, I wasn't 100% sure, but now I guess I am. Because if it came from Matt, uh, that's good enough for me. 100% Grenache. And uh, it tastes like a Grenache. It, it really does. But uh, I like the wine. Very fruity. It's it's very fruity, but it's not overly powerfully fruity. Uh, some black cherry, some uh, blackberry. Um, has a little hint of plum in it. It's. Uh, I've got to take another swig because it's been a while. Um, 
it's um, rather dark. This is a very full body. It looks like a full body to wine. And then these lights, you know, it, it looks, in these lights, it, it looks like every glass of wine I hold up is full bodied. But this one, this one is full bodied. <clears throat> I think it would go okay with the burgers. I think it would go okay with the, uh, I didn't try it with the pizza. I've got some pizza here, and this pizza is pretty, pretty cold. I'm going to have a tough time tomorrow after drinking that eggnog and all this stuff and then go back to pizza and wine. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I was a little weird because I didn't clear my palate first. And I've had cookies and pie and all kinds of stuff with this eggnog wine. Now I'm switching to this. I don't recommend that, by the way. <laughs> Have your dinner first, then the dessert. I know people who eat the dessert first and then dinner, but I, I don't recommend that. Have the have the dinner first, then have the dessert. I think it works better that way, especially if you're having wine like an Escorlata and then you're switching over to a dessert wine like the the Holly Hill eggnog. I think it's probably better to have the dinner first. Get that out of the way. <laughs> We're experimenting here, folks. We learn by doing. Learn not to do that, what I just did. Learn by doing. So, uh, what else is going on in the chat? Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Courtney, i got to write down that... Uh, who else was I sending a, uh, an ornament to? It was uh, Jonathan, right? Jonathan. Okay, well, let's give away... I want to give away a t-shirt. Uh, we have any other podcasters in here tonight? Anybody into podcasting? I kind of want to... I've been wanting to give away uh, a podcast-related shirt, but... Uh, and I, I know if we had some of our podcaster uh, uh, viewers in here that I could do that fairly easily because they would uh, I know that they would appreciate the kind of shirt it is. I've got a uh, I don't know if this is relevant to anybody else, but podcasters. This is from Blueberry.com. I'm a podcast master. I'm going to say I guess I'm going to say that and see if anybody else comes in here with a podcast. Uh, it's yours. <laughs> first person who shows up here, first person who shows up here with a, a who's a podcaster, that shirt's yours, okay? <laughs> if anybody does, and uh, that's from Blueberry.com. Blueberry is uh, is a host, one of the premier um, podcast hosting services for hosting a podcast. And uh, my good friend Todd Cochran gave me some of these shirts, uh, and Mike Dell. We were at PodFest last year. Uh, he gave me a couple of these shirts to give away on one of my wine streams. And I'd had it here for a while, and I had I just I, I was looking for the right time and place to do it. Figured this was it, but I didn't see any, uh, any podcasters in here tonight, so to speak. So um, I'm going to save that. First person who, who's a podcaster and uh, or who wants to be a podcaster, wants to start a podcast, I'm gonna, I'll send you the shirt. I've got an extra. I've got a small here, and I have an extra large. So uh, he gave me a few of these, and I'll give them away to whoever wants it that, uh, that is either podcasting now or wants to start a podcast or is planning to start a podcast. You get this shirt. It's yours. Okay? And, and, uh, and if nobody claims it this week, then we'll try it again next week. And, you know, speaking of which, uh, next week, Gordon has joined us in the chat. Hi, Gordon. It's good to see you. Gordon is actually a podcaster. He, I don't know if you, you heard this or not, Gordon, but... I've got a, I've got a, he's a podcast, I, I just said this, and, he, and all of a sudden Gordon shows up, I, I wonder if you were watching on the sly and, and, and just, just showed up, I've got this, this is from, from Blueberry.com, I don't know if you're a big fan of Blueberry or not, Gordon, um, or Lipson fan, I like both Lipson and Blueberry, and a few others, uh, Gordon says hi again, Rick. Hi, uh, right back at you, Gordon. Happy holidays! And once again, we're uh, we're drinking the Escorlata. Let me get a wider shot of this. The Escorlata, and uh, this is a 100% Grenache wine. It came from wine store. And I also tried this eggnog wine, which uh, which had has a white wine in it, which uh, uh, is still unidentified. I don't know what kind of white wine is in there. But I've had it. We've tried it with some foods, and we gave away a few things already. I uh, was just saying that uh, the next person who comes in here, who's a podcaster, and who wants a shirt, I've got a blueberry shirt. 
I'm a podcast master. Um, do you have one of these, Gordon? I don't know if you have one of these or not. If you don't, I'll send you a shirt. Uh, I was expecting more podcasters in uh, this this time around, but uh, uh, Gordon says I've got one of those tees. <laughs> I bet you do. You probably have a few of them. Uh, I, these are nice shirts, by the way. I have one. Tommy has one. I have a few of these that that uh, Todd gave me. Todd Cochran gave me uh, to give away on the wine stream some time back. And uh, I just hadn't gotten around to doing it, and I'm just getting around to doing it tonight. But I have uh, an extra large and a small, and and uh, I, I got a few. I got I've, I've got a few uh, smalls, and I think a couple of extra larges, I think, uh, on hand. I might have a medium in there too. I'm not sure. Um, it's been a while since I've looked. But uh, Gordon says uh, Gordon says thanks though, and he says yes. Yeah, you got a few. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, Gordon, um, stick around. Uh, I've got other things to give away as well. And we're going to give away, I'm, I'm hoping, that just before the end of the wine stream, we're going to give away to someone this emergency crank radio from buy2wayradios.com. And I've got something else here. What is it? Oh, yes, Veneto. I have a couple of these Veneto. They haven't arrived yet, but I do have a couple of these on the way. These are the Veneto uh, aerators. Just by themselves, not the whole uh, uh, Veneto wine lover set like what I have back here. But this is a Veneto uh, aerator, which I use every week on the wine street, and I like this. It's a nice little aerator. It's it's plastic. I mean, it's just not nothing fancy, but it's easy to clean. It comes in two pieces, and it's easy to clean. It works very well, and I like it. Uh, and it's pretty easy to use. Never had an issue with it, and I have two of these. I have one. I have two of these on the way. I want to give a one away of them. Uh, one of them away tonight, and uh, I'm going to come up with. A, I'm going to come up with something special with this crank radio here. But I, I do want to say, anyone here? Anyone here like science fiction? We were talking about Star Wars briefly a minute ago, but I've got a, a little story about Star Wars. And I started. And I don't. I know. I'm old. Okay, I'm an old guy. Um, I was in high school back in 1977 when when the original Star Wars, which is what is known as uh, Episode Four, A New Hope, came out. I was there. I mean, I remember the lines around the block. I was there. I was, I was not only there. I was, I was not only there, but I was one of the people standing in line. Uh, I saw it, I think the first couple of weeks it was out, I think I saw it six times, six or seven times. And I, I went to see it, uh, I think, I went to see one show, uh, I think it was on a Saturday night or something, and, and I I went home and I told my family about it. I bought the book, and I I, I think I bought, I bought the book before I saw the movie, and I, I thought, well, this is going to be exciting, this is going to be pretty awesome. So I went to see the movie, and I was not disappointed in, in the slightest, uh, and um, and so I, I I came home from seeing the movie and I told my family I said you got to go see this movie, so uh, convinced my dad and my mom and my dad kind of liked a little science fiction anyway, <clears throat> but convinced both my parents I said uh, you know you got to take the whole family to see this movie it's it's going to be awesome it's great. So we all went to see the movie and uh, really, uh, really enjoyed it. And I think I saw it after that. I think I went back and saw it about, f I don't know, five more times, six more times in the theater at the time. And uh, sometimes I go into uh, one of these duplex theaters. And at the time, they would have the, the twinplex. And I would go to see another movie. And uh, it would be playing next in the theater next door. And I'd, I'd skip out of the other movie and go see this again. <laughs> See both movies. Um, and so I, I, I saw it a whole bunch of times. And I was really enamored with the uh, not just the state-of-the-art special effects, which were state-of-the-art at the time, but the story. Uh, the music was great. The story was, was, was really cool. I really enjoyed the story. The characters were... I loved the characters. And just uh, everything about Star Wars. It was like... It was a little bit of everything for me. And it inspired me 
to make more of my own films. I was into filmmaking when I was really young. I was making 8 millimeter movies. And then uh, after Star Wars came out, it just really fueled the fire, the passion in me to write more. I was writing more of my own scripts for my own films and uh, was making my own films with, uh, with my friends and my schoolmates. Uh, we started a film club at our high school, the Lake Howell Film Club, Lake Howell High School Film Club. We got a, uh, we had a teacher that, that uh, he really enjoyed Star Wars and, and uh, he liked film anyway, uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Richardson. And uh, we got him to sponsor uh, a class. So the previous, next year, our senior year, uh, we got to actually take a class for credit, for school credit, on filmmaking. And we, we made a film uh, in that class. And it, it, was, it was great. It was, it was just, uh, uh, my senior year was just, just uh, the best year because we were, uh, we were making movies, pretty much, and, and getting school credit for it. <laughs> That's, it, was, it was great. But uh, that, that inspired me. It really inspired me to, to, to do all these things. Uh, I think that if Star Wars had never happened, um, I, never, I don't think that I really would have ever experienced that, you know, those things that, that I had in school. And it actually helped me graduate because it, it helped me bring my grades up enough uh, to where I could graduate because I, I was not the best student you know, when I was in, in school. But just the fact that uh, I was able to, to make films and, and my friends and I could make a film for a project and, and ace a course because nobody was doing that back then. Back in the uh, mid to, to late 70s, nobody was making movies and, uh, for, project, for school projects. It was just not something people did. And not very many people anyway. So even if the film turned out really, really bad... Uh, we'd get an automatic A. I mean, we'd ace it. We'd ace the project, and oftentimes it was a it was a project that that was significant for our grade uh, because we made a film in school. So, uh, what I'm getting at is that Star Wars to me, uh, Star Wars has a lot more significance to me than uh, than maybe some other people. I mean, a lot of other people would remember. Yeah, I remember when Star Wars came out, and I have a lot of warm feelings, a lot of warm fuzzies and, and nostalgic uh, memories of, of Star Wars and, and uh, you know, it, 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 was a, it became a part of our culture, of course. But it really helped me. It helped me graduate high school. <laughs> it helped me uh, uh, really develop more of an interest in film and video later on and writing. And, uh, and doing what I'm doing today. I guess in a way, uh, Star Wars kind of helped shape uh, where I went uh, in, in, in career-wise in, in terms of doing media, doing uh, promotion, marketing, and media. And one of the reasons, I guess in some small way, one of the reasons why I'm a podcaster and a streamer today so it was a huge influence on my life, and and I was not the only one. It was a huge influence. That movie and and the the series of films that followed was a huge influence on on millions of of people, millions. So now we have this new Star Wars movie that's that's opened up. I haven't seen it yet, so I, I'm not giving out any spoilers because I haven't seen it yet. We're we're, we're planning to go see it this weekend, um, but we have our tickets already. But. Um, this the reason that this last episode of Star Wars, and of course, there's been a lot of for the last trilogy. Um, there's been a lot of controversy over it because they, once Disney bought it from Lucas, uh, you know, the, the, there's been a lot of controversy from diehard Star Wars fans that oh, well, you know, Disney's just destroying Star Wars, and I think in some ways there, there's something to be said for that. There, there really is, but. I'm going to see the movie um, this weekend with my family, um, you know, for, I guess, in a sense of closure, because it is the last film in the Skywalker series and in, in the three sets of three trilogies, or the three trilogies, I, I should say. And uh, so it's going, it's, it kind of has some special significance to me. So that's why I want to go see it. And, but this time I'm going to see it with uh, my wife and with my kids, who are also Star Wars fans. 
uh, second generation. <laughs> and um, so it's going to have some, some significance. So that's, you know, and whether or not the movie's any good or not, whether uh, I like it or not, or whether it's so-so to me, the fact that I'm going to see, I'm finishing something that I started 40-some-odd years ago, um, you know, that, that has some, you know, that's, it means something. It does. So um, if you're going to see it, I don't know if you've seen it, right? If you've seen it already, don't give me any spoilers <laughs> if you haven't seen it. But I, I, I went into off on a long tangent with that because I wanted to get into uh, the next giveaway here. Because um, aside from Star Wars, since I was a kid, I've always been a, a huge fan of sci-fi. And I used to watch a lot of my uh, with my friend Jim. By the way, Christina's in the chat. Christina, it's great to see you. I'm glad to see you in the chat. Welcome to the chat. And I hope you're doing well. I hope you and everyone's doing well. I hope Jim's doing f fine. I was just talking about uh, my friends, one of my, fr my, my closest friends, one of my closest friends, uh, Jim, uh, and we pretty much grew up together. We've been making films together for, for over 40 years uh, and, and doing other things. We've done a lot of things together, very, very creative stuff. And uh, he, uh, Jim and I went to see Star Wars together. <laughs> Jim and I, along with my friends, we, we all saw Star Wars together, the original one. And uh, so anyway, uh, where was going with this? Uh, oh, yes, uh, sci-fi. I was, I was always a big fan of, of, of sci-fi. And I, I love watching a lot of the old 50s sci-fi. You know, back when it was, a lot of people think, well, you know, it's a lot of cheesy sci-fi stuff with a goofy, fakey monsters and and uh, uh, the goofy plot lines and and a lot of stuff. But, you know, back in an area, an era when uh, we really didn't know as much then as we do now about things like space and about time travel, space travel. And we don't still know anything about time travel, but well, you know what I'm saying? It's about science. And science fiction then was, you know, you watch some of these movies and a lot of them are very campy, not in, not intending to be campy. They were trying to be cutting edge for their day, but they're, they're very campy now to watch because they didn't really know enough or they had some misconceptions about science that, that, uh, that we've learned uh, more about now. And so you, you look, you know, you look back at some of these films and you think, oh, you know, some of those are kind of a little silly or funny, but but they're still fun to watch. They're still fun to watch. And, and you know what? There is some sci-fi, some genres of uh, some areas of that genre of sci-fi, uh, some films that were really kind of cutting edge, that were kind of breaking some ground, breaking new ground in science that they didn't really understand the science, so to speak, but they got a few of those things right. And, and I'm not really talking about Star Trek because Star Trek, you know, that, that was its own thing. And, and yeah, yeah, there's a lot of uh, technology now that we're, we're getting into now that Star Trek pretty much predicted. And to a certain degree, Star Wars as well. We were, I was watching a video earlier today uh, where somebody actually made his own lightsaber. Now, granted, that was a, an extremely dangerous thing he was doing, but it was <laughs> the way he did it. But uh, he actually made his own, or a precursor to the lightsaber. But we've got a lot of this stuff now that, uh, you know, if we went back in time and showed them to people making science fiction movies then, they would say like, wow, I didn't even think about that. And then the next question would be, what? Still no flying cars? <laughs> no, still no flying cars. But uh, what I'm getting at is I, I love good science fiction. I also love some of the campy science fiction, too. It's just fun to watch from the 50s and the 60s and 70s and even up to today. I have some favorites, some all-time favorites, but I want to know what your favorites are. If you like science fiction, now, if you don't like science fiction, it's okay. It's, it's okay, too. But if uh, you have a favorite science fiction film, tell me what it is. I want to hear what your favorite uh, uh, sci-fi film is. If it's one that I have seen, um, then uh, you know I will. Uh, you know, what we give away? I'll give away t-shirt. I'll give away a two-way radio show t-shirt. Um, if it's if it's one that I have um, I have seen that I like, 
If it's one I seen that I didn't like, uh, no no shirt for you, as I would say on Seinfeld, no no shirt for you, no shirt for you. But uh, if you if it's one that I like that that uh, is that uh, I've seen, uh, tell me what your your favorite, or maybe just give me a title, and I'll tell you if I liked it or not, if I've seen it or not. And I tell you what, if I haven't seen it and I don't know anything about it, I will give you one of the Veneto. Uh, aerators. I'll send you one of the Veneta, Veneta area. So if it's one that I haven't seen that I've never heard of before that is a classic that's real, I'll give you the Veneto aerator. If it's one that I have seen that I do like, I'll send you a Bite to Wear Radio Show t-shirt. How about that? So anybody there, any takers for this? I think um, I'm going to have another piece of cheese here while I'm waiting. <laughs> Just because I can. Once again, after having the dessert, having the dinner, not the same thing. Mm. So, I'm going to give you a minute or two to sort that out, to mull that. And then uh, after that, we're going to go ahead and give away the emergency uh, compact crank radio to, to someone. Someone's going to win that radio. No one in YouTube. Not much going on in Twitch. All the action seems to be happening on Facebook. What do y'all say? Anybody, uh, any, any takers on this? Um, so, Christina, how about you? And if Jim's watching, Jim could give me a, a lot of different uh, titles for movies because I've watched a number of these movies with him. Matt, uh, how you doing over there? Now, you're still... Uh, tell me about what your grandpappy used to, to put in his eggnog. That's what I'd like to know. If it's uh, something that uh, that would make you wake up three days later, it must have been something really intense. And uh, let's see, Joyce is there, Lon's there. Uh, Lon's been quiet tonight. How you doing, Lon? I hope you're having a good uh, holiday. And uh, Lon, you got the, I, I think I sent you a t-shirt, didn't I? Yeah, I think I did. Uh, I hope you got that. And I haven't... Uh, who is that, Carol Ann? Someone had uh, asked me, uh, had, had uh, pointed out um, something. I think they had, um, I, gave, I gave her a shirt too, uh, although I didn't get her address, so I couldn't send it to her, but I wanted to to um, send her out a t-shirt as well. So nobody comes up with any sci-fi, nobody's into sci-fi. <laughs> well, let me know, and... Uh, just just throw out a just throw out a title there somewhere. It it can't be Star Wars because we've already talked about Star Wars. I, I will say that I'm I'm going to uh, I'm going to go we're going to go see the um, uh, what is it called the uh, the Rise of Skywalker tomorrow. Jonathan says, "What's the movie question?" Well, the movie question is this. Uh, Jonathan, you like sci-fi? You like science fiction? The, the movie question is, um, you got a choice here. Uh, what is, um, if, just give me a title of a sci-fi movie that you've seen, or one that you've seen that you like, not Star Wars. Uh, not Star Trek. Uh, Star Wars and Star Trek are out because those are obvious ones. Um, if I've seen it and I like it, I'll, uh, I'll send you a, um, a Toy Radio t-shirt. The Day the Earth Stood Still. Okay, Jonathan, I think you just got the Veneto. Um, you got the Veneto. Um, you got one of these. This is a Veneto aerator. I was giving one of these away if it's one that I had seen. The Day the Earth Stood Still. Yes. Yes, I love that movie. It is a classic. Now, are we talking about the original or are we talking about the remake? With uh, I think in the remake that was... Uh, who did the remake? I think it was uh, Tom Cruise, I think, did the remake, right? But the original one, the original one, I loved. The original one is a classic, and um, you know uh, the 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 remake. Eh, I've seen them both. I've seen the original many times, and um, you say yes, yes, the original. You're talking about the original. Okay, great. Um, okay, I tell you what, you you just won the the Veneto because I love that movie, and I showed it to my son Tommy. 
Tommy got to see it finally. I, t I used to tell him about that movie, and now he, he and he saw it and he he liked it. It's a, it's a good film. It's a classic film. Jonathan says original all the way. Watched it with my dad. That's the way to do it. That's how Tommy and I saw it. Uh, you know, well, I showed it to him. I'd seen it years ago before myself, but um, I introduced him to some sci-fi there, and that was one of the the early ones that I introduced him to. Classic, classic film. Cla uh, I can't remember the robot's name though. Oh boy, that's a good trivia question. Maybe I should do. Maybe I should get away the radio with that one. Um. You don't remember the robot's name? Okay, okay, this is it. Okay, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> That's perfect. Thank you, Jonathan. That's perfect. I do remember the robot's name, okay? The robot's name. Whoever can remember the robot's name. No, okay. Uh, how do I know nobody's going to cheat at this, okay? I, I don't. I don't. I've got to go by faith. We're gonna, we're going to go by uh, 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 honor. Okay, honor system. Whoever can tell me the name of the robot, and I know the name of the robot, in the original movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still, I will give away the emergency compact crank radio. And Tommy, uh, if he's home yet, uh, I don't think he's home yet. But if you are, you can't. You're, you're disqualified. You can't do that. <laughs> Son of the host, so he can't. You know, you know the name, but um, if you know the name, if you can tell me the name of the uh, the robot in the day the Earth stood still, you win the emergency compact crank radio. How about that? I like that. Jonathan says my dad was a huge sci-fi fan and Isaac Asimov, etc. Yes, I was. I I uh, love Asimov. I've read a lot of Asimov. I've seen some uh, some films based on Asimov uh, uh, books. Uh, was a big Asimov fan when I was a kid. Uh, loved Isaac Asimov. Uh, some of my other favorites were uh, Robert Heinlein. Robert Heinlein, I, I really enjoyed his his books. He did a, a number of series of books. Uh, Frank Herbert, Frank Herbert, the Dune series, another classic series of uh, sci-fi uh, books. But um, uh, and, and I'm actually um, surprised that um, that more people are really not aware of Dune since it, it was it was kind of a classic uh, series and they even made a couple series they made uh, they made a movie out of it and then they made a whole uh, a mini series out of it and, and things like that Dune uh, you know a lot of uh, yeah, you know, Frank Herbert was another one of my favorites, uh, and also uh, Arthur C. Clarke, Arthur C. Clarke, who authored um, 2001: A Space Odyssey, 2001, another classic sci-fi movie. And I can, I remember we we had a um, we had a uh, film uh, when we had our film club back in high school, we had a film day or went out on a, on a field trip and they were playing 2001, a space odyssey and a special showing in our area down in Orlando. And, uh, we did a field trip where we took, uh, we had a club meeting and then we all had a field trip. where We all drove down there and, and watched the movie. And it was really cool because I, I went in there and I, I said, well, I talked to the theater manager. Said, you know, uh, we're we're with a local film club in high school. Uh, is it okay if we could tour around the projection room? I mean, this was back in the '70s. Um, and he said, sure. Yeah, I'll give you the grand tour. So the film club got to go up there and tour around the projection room. We got to stay up there and watch 2001, uh, part of 2001, from up there. It was pretty cool. Everybody had a great time. It was a lot of fun. But. Um, uh, you know, classic film, 2001: A Space Odyssey. Another, another one of my favorites, all-time favorite sci-fi films. Uh, I've got, a, I've got a lot of favorite sci-fi movies. Uh, Day of the Earth still is one of them. This Island Earth, another one. Um, wow, uh, so, so uh, many of those, uh, the classic uh, 50s and 60s films. Uh, I, anyway, so whoever can tell me the name of the robot. In uh, the day the Earth stood still, you win the emergency compact crank radio. 
If nobody wins it tonight, we'll carry this over to the next uh, to the next episode. I've got to close this wine stream down because it's it's getting pretty late. It's almost midnight. I've been doing this for an hour and a half almost. Uh, over an hour and a half. Almost two hours. Didn't mean to go that long. Didn't think it would take that long to give away stuff. <laughs> Normally I do that pretty quickly. But I want to tell you that um, New Year's Eve, uh, I, I have another question to ask you guys. Uh, next week is the 28th. That's after the holidays, before New Year's. We're going to do our regular wine stream there. But I had a question. I was I was curious, would anybody be interested in, in a special New Year's Eve edition of Drink With Rick? Now, this I know that's in the middle of the week. Of course, we're off. I'm off, anyway. Um, for New Year's Eve, a lot of us are. If you don't have any plans wherever you're going to be New Year's Eve, I, I don't I don't know how many people are going up to Times Square to watch the ball drop or anything like that. But um, if you're up to it, we can do a special edition of the wine stream. It'd have to be a short one, about an hour or so. But if it's something that you're interested in, drop me an email. Drop me an email at uh, drinkwithrick.com at uh, Savoy Media, rick at savoyamedia.com, and tell me, let me know, uh, and then we can uh, see about maybe setting up a special one-hour edition, uh, a New Year's edition, and I'll do some more giveaways. I'll do some more giveaways on that one-hour edition of Drink With Rick. I've given away some ornaments tonight. Uh, I was trying to go for a T-shirt, but I, I guess Gordon's already got one of those. <laughs> but... Uh, Gordon, I tell you what, if if you know the an, if you know the answer to uh, the trivia question, who was the? I know it's a tough question, but this is uh, this is not a cheap radio. This is a really nice weather radio. This is an emergency compact crank radio with weather alerts. It has a crank on it so that if you lose power completely, you can crank it up. Uh, solar battery power. It has solar battery power on top. I showed you the ER three ten before that I have up here on my desk, and it's very similar to that. It's just that it's not, it doesn't have the dog whistle. Okay, I told you about the dog whistle. It doesn't have the dog whistle in this one. But it has uh, most everything else. It has uh, the no weather alert radio. It charges cell phones, tablets, and more. It, uh, what else does this thing do? It, um, let's see, uh, it has a, um, Flashlight it has a flashlight with an SOS alert. It has multiple sustainable power sources. A long rechargeable battery life, 2,000 milliamp lithium ion battery. That's part of it. The, the I mentioned the flashlight with the SOS beacon, and it uses Cree LEDs, which is really really uh, uh, nice LED uh, nice LEDs in the system. Regular radio too. I think it's AM FM radio also. I believe isn't it. <coughs> I believe so. I believe this one. Uh, this, yeah. So, who can tell me the name of uh, if you if you don't know if you know the name of the robot in the original uh, and also I think they used it in the remake too in the uh, original day the Earth stood still. Let me know. Uh, we'll keep it open for a couple more minutes. If, uh, if not, then we'll just kind of wait. We'll close the stream and we'll wait and, and give it away on new uh, on the next show. And uh, we'll try a different thing. Uh, we'll try a different uh, contest there. I really do want to give this thing away, though. So if you got a minute. Uh, you know, I'm trying to go by the honor system here. <laughs> But, of course, if I don't know you're looking it up on Wikipedia, then um, if I don't know, then, then I don't care, right? <laughs> so um, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll let it go another minute. Let's see if anybody knows. If nobody else knows the name of the robot in uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still, then, uh, then we'll save this for next week. And, and I'll, give you the, I'll give you the answer. I'll give the answer before we go. Uh, anyway, let me check the other, see here if anybody, it's easy to look up. So uh, nobody knows, nobody knows the name. Okay, well I'll tell you what, we got to close down the stream now and uh, we'll we'll pick it up next week. And uh, so nobody won this, this week, so we'll, 
We'll hold on to this and we'll give it away next week. I really want to give that away. But uh, Jonathan, you won the uh, Veneto, one of the Veneto uh, aerators. And, uh, and I'll get that out to you. You can email your address to me there at rickatsavoymedia.com. Or you can uh, private message me later. Anyway, tonight we were drinking the uh, Escorlada, 2018 Escorlada. And this is a Spanish wine. It is a Grenache. It goes pretty well with the burger. It goes okay with the pasta. Not, not crazy uh, about the pasta, but it's okay with it. It goes really well with the Gouda cheese. Although, uh, you yeah, know, a lot of things go well with the, that particular Gouda cheese that came from Trader Joe's. And um, the eggnog, we also tried the eggnog with uh, an unidentifiable white wine from Holly Hill Farms. That was pretty rich with the with cheese um, apple pie. And this cookie here that I might have to uh, deal with trademark and copyright issues on because it has R2-D2 and... I'm showing this on YouTube. <laughs> I'm I'm half kidding, of course, right? I'm half kidding. Uh, I don't think Disney's that crass to go after me for that. Uh, but you never know. Anyway, so I want to say thank you to everybody who joined me tonight, uh, and those who won prizes. I, I, I'll have I've got your names down here, and I will get your gifts out to you shortly. Uh, in the meantime. I hope everyone has a safe and, and happy holiday. Look, this is a holiday season. There's going to be a lot of people out drinking and driving. I want to ask that you please do not do that. Please don't drink and drive. Please don't text and drive. Please do not drink and drive because um, it, it's it's just um, that's that's uh, yeah that that uh, is not good. So. Uh, have a safe holiday um, and and uh, drink responsibly. Celebrate in the comfort of your home, apartment, hotel room, wherever you are. If you need to go home, you're somewhere else. Take an Uber, take a Lyft, something like that. Just don't don't drink and drive. And once again, do not text and drive. I want to say thank you for joining me in the chat tonight. I want to th I want to thank everybody. There's a, there's a list here. We have uh, Phil, thanks for joining me in the chat. Phil and Matt and Jonathan and Courtney and uh, Ron and Chris and Joyce, Lon, uh, my beautiful wife, Chi, and Gordon and Christina and uh, everybody who showed up. Who's here at the very, very beginning? I don't know, no. Let's see. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a long list. I want to thank you all. I want to thank you for being here tonight, and I appreciate it. Um, it means a lot to me. Always means a lot to me to have my friends here, old and new. And um, I, I hope that you have a very uh, happy holidays, whatever it is. And of course, I will be celebrating Festivus, the festival for the rest of us. Um. I, I want to uh, to tell you that um, it's it's been this past year. This is getting close to the end of the first year for this wine stream, and this f past year has been a blast. It's been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to doing this some more. I will keep doing this as long as it's fun to do. I'll say this, but um, you can uh, catch this later. You can watch me uh, on uh, YouTube as well. Catch later on on uh, Facebook. You can uh, listen to the podcast. Podcast out uh, comes. The podcast comes out on Monday nights at um, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Monday nights, and uh, you can watch. You can listen to the podcast on uh, Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and uh, iHeartRadio and uh, everywhere. There's podcasts. <laughs> Stitcher and and. Uh, Blueberry.com and, and all those good places. So uh, you can catch that later. You can also contact me if you have any comments, you want to know more about the show, you wanted to do something with the show, participate in the show, send me some wine to drink and review. I'm, I'm all for that. 
Contact me, Rick at SavoyaMedia.com. That's Rick at S-A-V-O-I-A-M-E-D-I-A.com. It's been a pleasure, everyone. It's been a pleasure. I'm, I'm glad you've been here. Tim, I almost forgot about Tim. Tim's been in the chat, too, tonight. I hope he's still there. <laughs> Tim, you're rather quiet tonight. But uh, I want to thank everybody who joined me tonight. I want you to have a great week, have a safe week, have a happy holiday and a safe holiday. Join me again here next week and uh, on the Saturday Night Wine Stream, and we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.